Hi, it's vegan personal trainer and nutritionist Paul from Hench Herbivore, and this is the latest in my Q&A series where you get to have your questions answered. If you want to optimize your health or sports performance without harming animals or the environment, hit the subscribe button, click the bell icon so you're notified of new uploads. Okay, so this first round of questions came in via the Facebooks. Hi, it's Jen, my old friend from my dormant days. Hey PK, Dad and I changed to mainly vegan, slowly switching from vegetarian, very good. And he has emphysemia, I've been doing a bit of research, but might be a good question for your video. So, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases can be hugely benefited by a whole foods vegan diet. So it's, you know, it's whacking in the legumes, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, little nuts and seeds, your herbs and spices can be a huge benefit. I don't believe that it can reverse but it can hugely lower the uh, symptoms. Also, maybe controlling insulin resistance. I've actually managed to lower my metformin intake through the diet. You can reverse type two diabetes with a whole foods plant-based diet, as I just discussed, and it even mitigates the, again, the symptoms from even type one. It can ease things a little bit. Yeah, um, insulin resistance is, is caused by intramyocellular lipids, so fat inside the muscle cells, it's mostly like saturates from things like animal products. And also, so it's also there like breakdown products and the related oxygen free radicals. There's a great book by Dr. Neil Barnard, The Program for Preventing and Reversing Diabetes. I think not only has he cured like probably hundreds, thousands of patients with nutrition alone, I've done it in my own client. I've seen it done like and fairly quickly as well. So I guess it's a bit of a fat loss diet. I would eat lower fat high carb, as I said, the way I just discussed for your dad as well. Good luck. Andrew Forbes, it's me old mate from the gym, it's me old mucker. Is it true that vegans live longer than non-vegans? The easy answer is, on average, yes, about eight years seems to be the data. However, you know, there's vegan diets and there's vegan diets. I don't really like, the, not that I don't like the word vegan to describe a diet, but it's not enough. I like to say whole foods vegan diet or whole foods plant-based diet. It then tells me what you are eating. You know, you can be vegan, you can drink beer and you can eat crisps and donuts and that could be your whole diet. And that's gonna be a much different health outcome than kale, quinoa and, and berries, things like that, you know what I mean? In that instance, you know, a whole foods plant-based diet, you know, I would imagine the life expectancy will be much greater. The trouble is, the science has not really been done. We've not really looked at standard like Western style of eating with, you know, animal products and plant foods and, and junk food versus even a paleo diet. Although the biggest killer of humans is heart disease, which is mostly like animal products, that's fat clogging up your arteries. There are still parts of that diet which make it superior to a standard eating modality, you know, not eating the processed foods, eating a good amount of certain like vegetables and things, which puts it above. So it's kind of on a continuum. I'd say standard Western diet is here, whole foods plant-based diet is here, and that's the best way of eating, you know. And the science has not been done, this eating modality versus this, versus vegetarian versus pescatarian. It's not really been done, but from the overwhelming balance of data, it is just so obvious that the more you go to a whole, towards whole plant foods and the less you have animal products and processed plant foods, the longer and healthier you're gonna live. And not only, yeah, that's important to say as well, on average, Westerners are living longer than ever, which sounds great. But the reason we're living longer than ever is not because of the quality of the food, it's because we've got these medications that help us to sort of soldier on. But we're getting, more years of life, we're getting less years of functional life. We actually can't fend for ourselves towards the end of life, or we can't get about and, you know, who wants that? That's miserable. So if you want a longer life, go more towards the whole plant foods. Body, Safiotlu, Safiotlu, I'm so sorry, I'm butchering this, I know. This is in two parts, so I'm gonna uh, do it bit by bit. There's only one question I get constantly, but... Where do you get your protein? It's always said exactly the same way, people cannot accept that. Vegetables, grains, potatoes, etc. have protein. 
They also can't accept that we might not need as much protein as we've been led to believe. Do you know the simplest thing, the simplest way to put this to get people, get it into people's like thick skulls? No animals make protein. Only plants make protein, specifically the amino acids that make protein. Plants grab atmospheric nitrogen, pull it in, they create amino acids from that. Ourselves and other animals eat the plants, we take those amino acids and we form them into whichever of the two million different proteins that we need. So just very simply, I would say I get my protein the same place that your protein gets its protein from the source. I don't have it from the middle moo. And yeah, protein has been severely overstated. We only need a small amount of protein for muscle building. Uh, if we're on a bulk, if we're on a cut, we're trying to lose weight. Some people overstate protein because I think carbs are insulinogenic and can store fat. Well, protein is often as, and sometimes is more insulinogenic than carbohydrate. So that's just BS. And the other part of the question is, the other statement I've heard quite a bit is related to bloating whenever they've tried. They go into the, my body's different and my body needs mode, completely closing their minds to the possibility. Put very simply, their body is not the problem. The types of bacteria that they've invited to live in their gut from the foods they've been eating historically are the problem. They've got too many of the pathogenic bacteroides types because of eating animal products and processed plant foods. And they've not got enough of the Prevotella healthful types that are beneficial in so many ways. The key to good health is having an overabundance of these Prevotella, you know, as our enterotype, as the environment in our gut. So the answer, You've got your, your diet currently. You take out some of the animal products and processed plant foods. You put in a little more fiber week by week by week by week. And then over that time, you're just allowing the Prevotella strains to, to blossom, to kind of mushroom, and you'll have no problem. It's not your body, it's your terrible eating choices historically. Josh Walton. This looks like it's in two parts as well. Best high protein, low carb source for getting shredded. He also goes on to say, I'm struggling getting sufficient calories on a low carb diet. Well, I'll tell you the easy answer that will beat both of those. Why are you eating low carb? Protein has been so overstated. I used to eat 500 grams of animal protein a day as an omnivorous eater, because I had that more is better mentality. Just kind of bro science, not really, not at all looking at the data. 500 grams of animal protein, I didn't even count plant protein because I didn't think that it did count. We don't need to be eating a high protein diet, it, it, I've proved to it myself. If we eat a higher carb diet, we actually fill our muscles out, we look a lot more rounded, we've got energy, and we just need that minimum of protein for muscle building or maintenance. The fact of the matter is that a high carb, lower fat, lower protein, whole foods, plant-based diet is proven to prevent 14 of the 15 leading causes of death in the West, the other being accidents, so just look where you're going. It treats the vast majority of them and can even reverse a small handful, in kill, including killer number one, heart disease. So why would you eat any other way? And then we've got Larry Slack with a very quick question. When did you go vegan? Eight years ago, best decision I ever made. Physical, mental health, through the roof. I feel amazing. Cosimo Chiaviti. A vegan, 180 pounds man wants to build muscle. How many grams of protein is really needed per day to see gains? Thanks. The best available science suggests around 1.7 grams of protein per day per kilo of lean body weight. If half the body is fat, well, you're not building muscle onto this, it's inert tissue. So you wouldn't need half as much as someone who was, you know, mostly muscle. What I will say is very important that a lot of people miss is total calories. We want to be in a slight caloric surplus so that we've got the energy and you know the raw materials, the protein with which to build muscle. If we're not in a caloric surplus, you're going to burn some of the protein as fuel and then you're not going to have anything to, or not as much to build with. So carbohydrate and fat as well, but emphasize carbs, you know, it's protein sparing. So make sure you've got your total calories, your weight's got up that little bit and just that kind of minimum of protein that you need. If you go more than about 1.7, you know, it's potentially risking your health. Obviously plant protein versus animal is much better, but there's potential like detriments, you know, maybe you're gonna to have to not eat all whole foods, for instance, as well, because pro you know, protein sources in, in whole plant foods come with carbs and fat as well. So uh, bear that in mind. 
Gemma Everard, what are the best exercises for a mum tum? I've had some steel that are hidden under a layer of mummy bulge. So what I will say is there's no such thing as spot reduction. You can't burn fat off just from one area, e.g. the tummy. So no particular exercise is gonna be good. The way exercise works is just in terms of caloric expenditure. You know, if we're eating less calories than we're burning, obviously then the fat comes off, but it comes off from the whole body and if you've got more percentage in the midsection, well, it's just gonna take that bit longer to show. Also, best vegan protein, please. I'm not taking in yet, but just be good to know for when I'm at that point, thank you. So most of you will no doubt be aware that I'm an ambassador with Vero Life Protein. It is by far the best vegan protein on the market. One of the few to not test positive for heavy metal contamination. Um, it's bio-fermented, so it's very digestible. Lovely flavors, but not from artificial rubbish, you know, it's real food. Link in the description, 10% off with code HENCH10. That's like a one-time dilly. However, if you continue to use my link, you help to fund the channel, which obviously if you like what I'm doing, you know, I'm very, very appreciative. It just helps me to, you know, spend more time doing this than being a PT, etc. Oh, and PS, I hate cardio with a passion. I just cannot focus and lose all motivation with it. Do you know, I'm the same way. There is ways around it though. Uh, at one time, I would go for walks and I tell you, if you could get out into nature rather than being in the city, you know, that's huge, it's great for our soul. And I would recommend, you know, like music or a podcast or an audio book. If you could be learning at the same time, you know, that's a way to really, really like benefit your, your life, you know, really expand yourself. More recently, I've taken to doing the cross trainer at the gym. Uh, but what I have to do is I have to put on something really inspiring. And I actually listen, uh, recently I've been listening to the Viking soundtrack, you know, and it's a lot of sort of battle songs, it's very atmospheric with the ravens and thunder and I love that show and I feel like, you know, I look at myself as sort of a warrior for the animals and I imagine I'm taking on animal agriculture and I get emotional and I have to actually rein myself in, you know, I go that little faster, that little further each time, but I sometimes get that emotional, I want to go bonkers. But so I have to pull myself back. So um, doing things for a higher cause is important as well. So if you've got anything that drives you, you know, think about that. If you've enjoyed this video and you feel like it may be of benefit to others, why not help grow our wonderful community by sharing this out on your social media and together we'll help inspire everybody to go vegan for victory.